Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm sharing a Halloween inspired birthday card using the Obats stamp set from Papery Ink in combination with the 3 Room Studio Mini Slimline Die from Crafty Meraki. First of all I'm starting with the coloring today and although I'm going to do exactly the same coloring on these 4 beds, I wanted to show you all of them. This is Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper and I stamped these images out using Gina K Designs Amalgam Ink Obsidian, which is the black one. And um, I just wanted to show you, this is one of my favorite combinations of RVs. I find it a really powerful combination, but as you can see me adding the second marker, I'm now going to the third one and here you can definitely see that there isn't a lot of blending happening, that the that the first layer is just ridiculously ugly and I just want to show you that flicking first of all really helps second of all if there is such a difference between one of your combinations um, then the tip to tip really helps as you can see here I just did a tip to tip and you have that blend this bed is almost done you know and yes um, since this image is quite tiny I on, well, I almost don't have any RV34 specifically uh, left over on the image because of the tip to tip. If you have a bigger image, then you will have a layer of tip to tip and the real RV34 as well. So here again, I'm doing exactly the same. I'm starting with my darkest marker, going towards my lightest, and I'm building up the coloring of this image. And as in the first image, this first layer isn't near to done. So I'm not going back in with my darkest, but just with my mid-tone, because the darkest is quite obvious there. Um, and then after some flicking, I'm just doing the tip to tip. If you want to have that RV34 also showing up, Aside from the tip to tip, then you can always clean off your marker on the side and just make sure that the tip is no longer filled with a bit of that RV69, you know, and then you will have um, that RV44 peeking out. So, on to the third one. Here I'm changing up the shadows uh, because he's facing towards the left, so I have the shadows in the back of the image. Um, just doing the same, uh, which is quite easy, but don't give up if there is uh, a blend not going as you want it to go. Just try the tip to tip or try to, to use another marker if you can, uh, but the tip to tip will, will bring you a long way. And personally, these are RVs, it's like the violets for me. I have difficulties with blending them. It's for me one of the hardest color families to get that blend. Um, but it works as well. Sometimes I just need five more layers, but I will add them if needed. Because I really love this combination. I love purples as well. Um, it's really powerful when you use RV or purple in my opinion. I don't do it often, but I really love it. <laughs> so, and as you can see, the tip to tip changes everything because the blend is just perfect, and you have the darkness and at the same time the brightness of this combination. So, once again, I'm doing the same sort of shadowing as on the first image because it's almost exactly the same one, but here you can see the little legs. And if I go outside lines, RVs, it's like reds, it's really hard to get rid of. But I just try as fast as I can to use my colorless blender. And um, you can always heat set uh, the part that you just try to correct. Um, that will help with the drying process so that the bleeding will not start again. Because sometimes when you use a colorless blender, you can sort of have it that... Uh, the color is leaking into the area where you just added the colorless blender. Um, so just dry your paper using your heat gun. Um, and then it cannot bleed again towards that area. And if needed, I just add five times that colorless blender. 
uh, just to get rid of it. If that doesn't work, you can always also use a white jelly roll pen or anything like that to correct the edges if you want to. And then once these beds are done, I'm going to continue with the pumpkin, which is really cute. Um, in this set you have several pumpkins, you have several faces. They are not immediately in the pumpkin, so you can decide if you want to have a face on your pumpkin or not, which is a lovely addition, I think. Because if you want to just make a fall themed card, you can do it without a face if you want to. If you want to do a Halloween inspired card, then just add a face or, or don't. You don't need a face for Halloween necessarily. So here I have some brownish orangey colors. And I'm using for the pumpkin. Um, and the first layer, as you can see, is really soft. Um, also, the blend is not exactly there completely. And then the second layer, I'm going further in with my second marker. And then I'm blending it out. And that second layer, the blend is already way better than with the first one. So once this pumpkin is done, then I had to fussy cut these images because unfortunately paper ink doesn't have matching dyes but it's like clearly besotted. Personally this brand is too cute to not have because of matching dyes. Um, so I will do the effort to fussy cut everything out which is not my favorite thing to do but if needed I will. Now for the background, as I said in the beginning, I'm going to use the Three Room Studio Mini Slimline Die from Crafty Meraki. And I just trace the die onto a piece of paper because I'm going to do some ink blending and I prefer doing that before die cutting. Um, just to have it easier not to have to add purple tape on the back, which is also a possibility. Uh, but now I have more wiggle room. And I can just die cut the area that I prefer. So I'm going to make a really dark night sky kind of background using some purples because I did some purple on my images. And I kind of think that the Citrus Preserves is almost the same color as the <laughs> tip to tip that we did with the RV34 and 69. So because of that, I'm starting with the Chip Sapphire. Then I'm going towards Dusty Concord and then Seedless Preserves and I will finish with a bit more of black soot on the top. But just to first have my in blending going on, I'm starting with all the colors except for the black soot. That will definitely go on the top, um, but first let's get that blend going. It took me quite a while to get this blend as I wanted it to and then even later on I wasn't completely convinced about it so we will change that. Um, later um, but for now trying to sort of see as well where the blend is just ending um, so that I can be sure that I have it spaced out correctly so now I decided to add the black because I saw with the dye that the blue and the purple needs to shift a bit more um, and now I'm really really heavily blending it can always help if you are having trouble with the blend, just go for that first layer like with your Copic markers. And then once you have that, um, sometimes your paper get a bit, gets a bit more saturated and that can also help you to wiggle with the inks. If you're new to ink blending and um, you really want to ink blend with Distress inks, um, they are less forgiving onto certain papers. But if you want to get going, and first get to know the inks before having to worry about the papers start maybe a bit stress more bristle smooth it was the first paper that i used as well there the ink stays a bit more on top so that you have more time to get that blend going on instead of papers like this where it soaks into the paper quite immediately um, and that limits uh, your possibilities but i already ink blended a lot of these papers so i am really used to blending on transotype as well uh, so that's why i just keep using the same paper it's easy it's on hand um, but definitely try out different papers if you're struggling with blending because we all need to get used to inks every ink is different um, every brand has a certain 
differentiation also um, some colors will work others will not um, the blending tool that you're using can also uh, change your end result completely uh, so just because of that don't give up if blending isn't working out in the beginning and um, just keep evolving keep trying things and you will get better you will get used to papers you want to use and um, that will just help you so once I was happy with the blend and I was sure that there was enough of it because the whole panel needs to fit um, then I'm going to add some white gouache as stars for this um, sort of night sky thingy so I'm just turning the images around because when I'm splattering it's going everywhere on my laptop, on my lamps, on my glasses even that I'm wearing um, so just to not ruin my images I didn't want to have stars on my images when it's snow it's different uh, but for my stars I prefer them to be only on my background um, so therefore I just turned them in case the splattering went all the way onto my images as well. So I'm really heavily splattering my stars on the background here and once that's dry I'm going to die cut the panel out. Now I'm, I decided to lay out everything and I just I really like the seedless preserves as I said it's sort of similar to the coloring that I did but I truly did not like the fact that it was this aligned with my coloring um, so we will fix that later on I also wanted to have this tree uh, on the, one of the windows but I should have done it before splattering the stars but I don't mind how it looks now it's really subtle actually and that's also something that I like it was not on purpose but it ended up like that and now I can add that one bed uh, to the branch now as I said the bottom I don't like it I don't so here I was doubting what I was going to do um, and I decided to try out the pigment ink I have here it's the unicorn one which is a white pigment ink um, it's really juicy as well and just to, to add a bit of this on the bottom to have some sort of a grounding and here I thought no you mess it up I truly didn't like it then I thought maybe just continue you're already here so I tried to have that that's that blend a bit smoother I cleaned up the brush a bit to not have as much ink left uh, to really blend it out and then I also rubbed a bit uh, rubbed a bit with paper to have a really soft transition into the seedless preserves and actually laying the images on top again I preferred it more <laughs> so I was really happy um, I'm already going to add those windows to my car base here that's just handy and then I'm going to make sure to add my sentiment before adding in the frame here uh, on top of the car base so I temporarily added the frame uh, using some temporarily adhesive the dot roller there uh, because I am one of those people that shift everything while uh, holding something in place it's not in place you know so just to avoid that I'm already well I'm just making use of what I have in my craft room <laughs> Now the sentiment, it's happy birthday, um, I'm going to white heat emboss it, but of course I heavily ink blended, so it can always be that there is still some wet ink. Um, so just to be sure, I heat set it again, and then I'm going to white heat emboss the sentiment. So just using Versamark clear embossing ink, I made sure to prep the area as well with an anti-static powder tool. And then after flicking off the excess embossing powder, I just melted the embossing powder. And now I'm going to buff off the excess of the anti-static powder tool. Now to create some dimension on this card, I'm going to add this um, using foam tape. So I'm just making sure that the tape fits. This is Scotch 3M foam tape, the regular one. Um, and I'm just filling the back of this panel completely 
and then I will add it to my card base. Now for the images, as there is dimension on the frame and not on the other elements, I am going to use the same adhesive to also add the images to this card to have the same height as the overlapping frame that I have. And then I will also use some liquid glue on the areas that are overlapping. So that everything is really, really stuck. Like that, and I'm just filling this card. You can add more images if you want to, but I thought that this was just perfect. Also, where I find that there is still a lot of wiggle room when I would mail it, I am just adding a bit more foam tape. Here I first thought to add the bed immediately to my card, but then with a bit of overlap with the frame, I had to add it with the foam. So on this one, to not have too many differences of height, I'm just using some thin foam squares. And then the other one, I will use a combination again of the foam tape with the glue. And aren't these images so adorable? I truly love them. They are super cute. And once they are on there, I'm going to add some final items. I decided to use these iridescent stars from Studio Katja and just have a few on this card as well. I know we have a starry background due to the gouache, but iridescent embellishments are always wonderful to use. So now that that is done, this card is completely finished, I'm not going to add anything more. I hope that you enjoyed this video and of course that you liked the end result. If you do, you can always give this one a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and get that notification on so that you will not miss any card making videos. I want to thank you all for stopping by and I'll be back soon with some new crafty inspiration. Bye!